Hello everyone, Nick again with Scog and Dickie. Today's tech video, we're gonna be going over the differences between the Gen 3 and Gen 4 blocks and engines, some of the control systems that controlled these engines, and what it takes when you're swapping one into another vehicle. Now, the Gen 3 and Gen 4 blocks are actually really, really similar. There's only a handful of small differences, and it mostly has to deal with a few sensors. When you're swapping one engine into another car, that's probably where you're running into trouble. So let's kind of go over some of those differences. The Gen 3 block, for this one, it is a 97 uh, LS1 block out of like a C5 Corvette. Uh, it's just an old dingy block I had lying around, so perfect mule for us to kind of display a few things here. Uh, you will notice that the knock sensors were screwed into the center valley cover. The valley cover would have holes and seals, and it would seal around these one wire big fat knock sensors and as well as the cam sensor went back here as well on the gen 4 blocks they change this up a little bit you're probably familiar with this the cam sensor went on the front timing cover and unlike the ls1 uh, camshaft gear i have right here it actually has some uh, notches in it for a reluctor on the camshaft for this cam uh, to get its signal they also moved the knock sensors. They changed up and went to a much more sophisticated two-wire knock sensor. And a part of that, they moved it to the side of the block down here, next kind of to the motor mounts real close to the oil pan. Now you can definitely swap a Gen 4 engine or an engine built with a Gen 4 block into a car that was originally powered by a Gen 3 LS. The problem is getting that wiring figured out. So let's kind of go over some basics here. Let's talk about the differences and throughout the years and then what it takes to put one inside of the other. Now, in the early years, your you know, 99 to 02 Camaros and Firebirds, I believe, 99 to 02 pickup trucks, you know, all the engines for the most part, they had cable driven throttle bodies. They had a computer that looked a lot like this, the wiring harness would have blue and red connectors that went to these, these big connector uh, attachments right here. This is a 24X style system, so it uses a 24X reluctor wheel on the crank and a 1X on the cam signal in the back on the camshaft. About halfway through the truck years, long after you know the Camaros and Firebirds unfortunately had died off, they went to um, an electronic throttle body <clears throat> much like this one here. The computers look similar. They changed up the wiring a little bit. And so to designate the difference, the connectors went from blue and red to blue and green. And they actually say it on the top of the computer here, blue and then green. It's still a 24X crank signal. It's still a 1X cam signal. Now, when the new stuff came out, C6 Corvette, your 07 and newer pickup trucks, they changed everything entirely. The computer didn't look like this anymore. It actually had three separate connectors. They still had an electronic throttle body, but that's when they finally went to the newer style knock sensors, the cam sensor in the front, and of course they went to the 58X reluctor wheel and the 4X cam gear. Now that is where the confusion starts. So let's talk about what it takes. Say for instance, you buy an LS3 crate engine from us for your 99 you know, fixed roof coupe Corvette. What does it take to put that engine in there in terms of electronics? Now what we recommend, the best way to handle this is you utilize your factory engine harness and your factory computer. Don't try to change any of that. That's what communicates to the rest of the car as well. This is what makes it easy. <clears throat> we have some Caspers extension harnesses for those sensors. And of course, a Lingenfelter box to convert the signals. And let's discuss that for a second. Now, this here has two knock sensor uh, connectors and a cam sensor connector. Now, it might be a newer engine, but you can't make your old operating system in these computers run on the new style knock sensor. You have to match these parts properly. Part of matching those parts is you have to stay with the old style knock sensor and that's fine, it'll work well. What you have to do is you have to drill and tap the hole on the side of the block, very easy process. It's not hard to do at all. You accept the slightly bigger thread and, uh, and pitch on these for the side of the block so it'll thread in. This harness will then connect to those as well as the new front cam signal or cam sensor location instead of the one in the rear. And then it'll all go back to the original harness. Makes it very easy. Now, <clears throat> part of that is your computer's looking for a signal with 24X on the crank, a signal for 1X on the cam, and you just put an engine with a 58X and a 4X. 
The Casper's harness helps adapt to the harness, but you still need to adapt that signal. That's where the Lingenfelter box comes in. A lot of y'all already know about these. This converts the 58X and 4X signals off the crank and the camshaft to the new older style computers. So you can still tune it and run it properly. That's the magic trick here. Do not try to use the newer computers and wire them into the older cars. It doesn't work very well at all. It actually has a very high failure rate among our customers that have tried. It's this setup here is what makes all this stuff work together. Now, <clears throat> You don't have to use this if you're custom building an engine. For instance, this is an LS2 crate engine that I'm building for a project of mine. It's going into a vehicle that is 24X. Because I built it, I have the opportunity to leave the crank reluctor wheel 24X and put a 1X signal on the front cam so I don't need the filter box. I just use the Casper's harness. I still have to drill and tap the side of the block for the old style knock sensor, and that's fine, it'll fit but I still get to use the older stall operating system. And of course, I don't have to buy the Lingenfilter conversion box. The good news about that is, is that the uh, crank signals in these blocks, both blocks were machined the same. So you can swap a reluctor wheel if you're up to the task. If you're buying a brand new crane engine from us, we really don't recommend it. Go ahead and buy the Lingenfilter box to convert the signals. It's the easiest way. I was fortunate enough to, be build, to, uh, to build this from the ground up. And so I was able to do that before I assembled it. I hope I've answered some of your questions today about Gen 3 blocks, Gen 4 blocks, putting them in different vehicles and all the parts you need to adapt it. We know this can be a bit of a daunting task. We know this can be a little bit confusing. I myself grew up fixing up, you know, old motorcycles and go-karts and pickup trucks and whatnot, Heck, even this old vet back here. So I'm used to carbureted stuff. And I will say most of the customers that call us say, the reason they're going carburetor is just because it's what they're familiar with and because it's simpler. And they're not wrong. It's you build to what you want. But we want to make it to when you finally make that leap into the EFI, which is a better system, that we can help you make it as painless as possible. So call us today with any of your questions or concerns with your project. If you've grabbed an engine from a junkyard, if you've bought a pullout from a Camaro or a Corvette, and you're trying to put it in a truck or a classic car, and you're trying to figure out what harness to use, what computer to use, what sensors to use, please give us a ring. Uh, you can also get a hold of us at sdparts.com. And uh, please give us a like, a subscribe, and a share on YouTube and Facebook. We're always looking to do more videos. So any questions, comments, concerns, in the comment section below, please let us know. We appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you next time.